Okay, so then the next question is, uh, what are the returns that, in fact, somebody's going to get from, uh, from doing? So they have a particular proposal for tax equity and asset rotation. So let's look at each one of those in turn, and we'll go back and look at it. And I've provided on the assignment sheet a set of questions that will, I think will help us understand uh, really what's going on here. And so we're going to look at those. And basically, let's look at Exhibit 14 uh, in the case. And here we have Exhibit 14 in the case. It's a little bit busy, and I think I can blow up a little bit, but it's a really busy kind of exhibit in that. But uh, I think what I can do is I can make it a little bit, I have reformatted it so that it may look a little, may format it so it so I've reformatted it so it look a little bit cleaner in what I wanted to do. So let's sort of go to that. And I think the first question will help. Let's look at some of the basic assumptions then. And basically, what they're going to do is the capacity is going to be 200 million. Uh, basically, let's I'll make this even bigger. Okay, some of the assumptions here. And basically, capacity will two the wind farm will generate 200 million in megawatts per hour. There's 808,766 8, hours in a year, uh, days, hours in a year. Utilization about 41%. So they basically generate about 719,000 uh, megawatt hours per year. Uh, basically, there, there's no operating expenses for the first uh, two, two years. Uh, 16 and 17, uh, but beginning in 2018 to 2025, uh, the op operating and maintenance costs for the turbines will be about $35,000 uh, per megawatt hour of capacity. Uh, that will go up to 40,000 in 2026 to 35, and finally estimated to be at 50,000 uh, per megawatt uh, hours of capacity in 2018. Other generating expenses over time are about 15,000, which starts in 15,000 per megawatt, which starts of capacity, which starts in year uh, 2016. It's going to grow at an inflation rate of 2% per year. And there's a tax rate of 35%. Those are the basic assumptions for doing it. So well, let's look at the first question. And the first question I ask you, what would EDPR's anticipate IRA be if they were the only investor and was able to take advantage of all the tax benefits? In this case, there'd be no tax equity investors or asset to rotation. So they're going to put up everything and basically uh, put up the whole cost and thing. So if we're doing this, and I'm going to see if I can uh, do this. Okay, so basically if we start to think about this is that we're talking about free cash flow here, so it would be EBIT minus taxes times net operating profit after tax plus depreciation minus uh, change in net working capital uh, minus CapEx uh, plus production tax credits, and that would be the free cash flow. All right, so that would be the idea here. And if we did this and we look at this, okay, first of all, we have revenue. Revenue is the energy price per megawatt hour generated, okay, and this is the generation of capacity per year, and that produces $26 million in revenue. There's no turbine cost maintenance for O&M for the first two years. Other expenses, this is basically uh, the 15,000 times the 200, million, 200 megawatt, uh, megawatt capacity. This is the depreciation schedule that, as we can see, it's quite accelerated in the uh, uh, rate at which this is being the thing. EBIT then would be just revenue minus expenses, including depreciation. That would be the EBIT. This is taxes. Now note, okay, taxes are positive here for the first 
okay, six years, and that's because of the large depreciation, because we go back over here, EB, EBIT is negative for the first few, first six years because of the large depreciation, okay, and this gives us our NOPAT. Now, embedded in that, the fact that I have taxes as being added back assumes that there's other, other revenue that they're generating someplace else, okay, that is allows them to lower the tax bill there and winds up sort of being a positive tax shield for this particular investment. If that were not the case, then all those taxes would be zero, or those positive numbers would be zero, and those taxes probably would be, tax shells would be uh, later in, in time. But let's just assume for this that they do have some other income that they can use it to offset I'm doing it, okay? So back over here, we got no PAT, added back depreciation, take out CapEx, they're in charge of the whole $387 million. There's no change in net working capital. And what I've done is added back over here the production tax credit. And this is the total free cash flows, okay, total cash flows that in fact they would receive, again, if they were the only investors, this is the tax flows that they would receive, uh, cash flows that they would receive. In that particular case, the IRR for their investment would be 7.47%, all right? Now, I know this is a um, sort of difficult to see based upon this, but attached to this is the Excel file that you can look at uh, and sort of maybe you want to print it out while, while I'm going through this so you can look at the Excel file. Uh, this. So this is, this is sort of so question A on, on for related to Exhibit 14, okay?